Hey everybody, Aaron from Sullis here. Today I'm in New Zealand, uh, road tripping around the North and South Islands and experiencing some absolutely stunning scenery. So today's video is my first ever corrections video. Well, it's not really a corrections video, but a couple years ago I made a video that said Sullis doesn't do this. Now they've built this feature, uh, and so I guess it kind of is. And that is the ability for guaranteed consumers to be able to knack or negatively acknowledge individual messages. So I'm gonna tell you about it, I'm gonna show you how it works. Let's get into it. So up until recently, the only way to uh, knack a received message in Solace was either to use session transactions and uh, do a rollback, or to close the flow, to unbind from the queue, to force the redelivery of a particular message. Only problem with that is if you have a large AD window or you've prefetched a bunch of messages off your queue, uh, it's gonna cause all unacknowledged messages on that flow to be made available for redelivery. There was no way to do it for exactly just one message. Now, to be fair, this capability has existed in the broker and in the SMF protocol for some time now because it's used by our RDPs to allow remote REST consumers to be able to send a 400 or 500 status code error response to REST messages. And also our support for AMQP, which requires the ability to do NACs. So Solace has been adding this to all of our native SMF APIs over the past several months. We're almost at feature parity. So by the time you see this video, hopefully every single API will have it and that is using a new method called settle on the message. And settle takes an argument of an outcome, and outcomes can have one of three uh, choices. One is accepted, which is essentially a, an ACK or a, a successful acknowledgement. Uh, the second one is failed, which means make this message available for redelivery. And the third is rejected, which means you know this message is so mangled that no number of redeliveries is going to uh, help. So either move it to the DMQ or discard it right away, uh, whichever you have it configured. Now, I have a little demo cooked up to show, uh, to show how this works, and I'm going to do it as soon as I get back to the office and back from vacation, okay? Thanks, vacation, Aaron. Okay, so let me show you this little app I've written to show off this uh, settle outcome capability. I've taken our JCSMP sample guaranteed subscriber and I've just added to it the ability to do uh, these settles. And the way you do that is when you uh, create your flow, when you bind to your queue, you specify in the flow properties that you want to use these outcomes. So rejected and failed, you can do one or the other or both. And then uh, that's about it. All I have to do now is down in my callback, you can see I basically prompt the user on each message uh, what they want to do with it. So, uh, you know, blocking in the callback is not typically great behavior, but this is not production quality code. This is just for a demo. Um, yeah, so I, you know, you can either accept the message fail the message or reject the message, and then I just loop as messages come in. That's about it, pretty simple. So I've got a queue already set up here, a queue uh, settle demo with uh, 500 messages uh, and queued on it. I have a subscription on the queue matching a demo settle slash greater than, so all of my topics on my messages start with a demo settle. You'll actually see that they are, uh, the third level is a sequence number that's increasing, which helps to kind of watch the messages going through. And all of my messages have been published with DMQ eligible, uh, which is really important because as of today, uh, we're in April 2024, our queues still don't have the ability to override DMQ uh, eligibility. So the publisher has to publish messages with that enabled. Um, you know, because I'm using DMQ stuff, I do actually have a DMQ configured for my queue called DMQ. Uh, I've enabled the delivery count for my messages as well, so the client application can see how many messages have been, uh, delivery attempts have been made. And I've configured on the queue a maximum redeliveries of two. So that is three delivery attempts, one delivery, and then two redeliveries. And that's about it. Other than that, everything else is kind of default uh, configuration. So let's go ahead and run my app. I'm gonna run it with an AD window, a subscriber AD window size of 10. And you're gonna see why that's important in uh, just a second here. So it'll go ahead and bind to my queue. There's the first message, demo settle one. And we're going to, let's just do an ACK, right? We're just accepting the messages. This is normal flow. I've processed my message, I've stored it, I've written to a database. And now I'm acking it off the queue, uh, which means it's uh, you know it's deleted off the queue. Now uh, the window down at the bottom, the pane is actually another little console app that's listening, echoing uh, messages as they arrive in the DMQ. So if I rejected this mes message straight to the DMQ, you can see it pop over there. So that's just to kind of echo the DMQ. You can see messages when they kind of fail or end up over on the DMQ there. So uh, message nine, message ten. How about message ten? Let us fail it. Let's do a knack. So I'm going to fail that message put it back on the queue, there's message 11. Now we're gonna receive a few more. Let's say we can ACK all these, ACK, ACK, 
processing is successful, eventually we're going to come back to that message 10 again. There it is, after exactly 10 messages. And so this is why your AD window is kind of important. Uh, the bigger the AD window, the more messages are likely you're to receive before you see that failed message again. You can receive up to an AD's window's worth of, it's not always exact, um, and it might depend on your API based on threading models and how things are kind of set up. So always best to check with your API kind of this behavior, um, but don't, it's, don't expect it to be exactly 10 uh, like it is here. So this is attempt number two. Let's fail it again. And there's 21, 22, blah, blah. Keep going, keep going. Will it be exactly 10 again? Yep, and there it is. So this is attempt number three. So if I fail, if I knack it one more time, we should see it appear, boom, over on the DMQ. So there you go. That's uh, just proving that it works. Uh, accept a few more. We can reject a few more. You know, straight to DMQ. Fail a whole bunch. Maybe ack a few more. Uh, start failing these guys again. The delivery attempt number two. Fail. Ack these guys. How about fail these guys? And if we fail a few more that are on three, you should see them pop over there. So yeah. Oh, if you have distributing trace enabled in your broker, you can actually see these different settlement outcomes in the distributed trace logs, either rejected or failed. So if you have centralized monitoring set up, uh, at least they'll be able to see when the app is doing one of these two uh, particular things. So anyway, that's the whole demo. Uh, like I said, I'll put the code somewhere on GitHub, link in the, down in the description. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, come find us on solace.community if you want to talk about it or ask questions. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one. All right, bye-bye.